Last year we saw Lewis Hamilton solidify once again why he is one of the greatest of all time. By taking his 6th Drivers World Championship and his 5th for Mercedes. And Lewis Hamilton is getting closer and closer to becoming statistically the greatest of all time. But whether it's stats or opinion, what can Lewis Hamilton do to be the GOAT by the end of 2020? And what are going to be the final steps in allowing Lewis Hamilton to possibly achieve that goal? Well, in today's video, I'm going to analyse why Lewis Hamilton really could be, by the end of 2020, the greatest of all time. Now, even though Lewis Hamilton is, of course, the best driver on the grid and is one of the best drivers of all time, we cannot doubt that his team Mercedes have helped him a lot in the past few years. Without their help, Lewis Hamilton would not be in this position to be right up there with drivers like Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher in terms of being talked about as one of the greats. And in 2020, Mercedes are going to be probably the most key factor in giving Lewis Hamilton what he needs to go and get another world championship. To equal, of course, Michael Schumacher on seven. And to be honest, in 2020, I think Mercedes are going to be just as strong as they were in 2019, if not even stronger. And there are reasons for why I believe this, let's get into those. And my biggest reason is that Mercedes gave up development quite rightfully early on on the 2019 car because they were so dominant and concentrated a lot earlier than other teams on the 2020 car. If you actually look at the developments Mercedes brought during 2019, they didn't bring that many upgrades during the season, but their last big one was around the summer break. And after that, the only parts they would bring would be prototype parts for 2020, such as this new side deflector they brought to Suzuka. But because Mercedes started 2019 so quickly out of the blocks and dominated the first seven to eight races, it's given them that advantage for 2020. Because they had both world championships wrapped up by basically Monaco and were able to concentrate on 2020 a lot earlier than they would have imagined. And if you compare that to Ferrari and Red Bull, the two teams who are likely to be their main competitors in 2020, Ferrari and Red Bull took longer to understand their car and get it fully working in 2019. Thus why Ferrari and Red Bull were developing a lot more during 2019 than Mercedes were. If you look at Ferrari, they really didn't get their car right until Singapore. And at this point of the season, it was over for Ferrari when it came to the championship, of course. And for Red Bull, it took about half a season for them to fully upgrade the car to the level that that car should at least be at. And because Red Bull and Ferrari had to spend time getting the 2019 car more so up to spec, that allowed Mercedes to concentrate on 2020 early. And that's why for 2020, this team is looking quite ominous. Because they could quite easily start the season in Australia the same way they started 2019. A front row lockout by 7 tenths of a second and winning the race 1 and 2 very dominantly. And their competitors, Ferrari and Red Bull, will really be hoping they haven't got the development for 2020 right just yet. And the other reasons that are quite obvious for why this team is going to be so good in 2020 is because they are the best team in Formula 1. They are very consistent and reliable. Strategically, they're very good. They have two very good drivers and the team is very well managed. There is hardly a weakness when it comes to the Mercedes-Benz works team. And even if they don't have a car this season that is as good as the 2019 car, they are still going to be quite hard to beat. But now Lewis Hamilton is on six world championships and is so close to Michael Schumacher's record of seven world titles. And he's also so close to Michael Schumacher's race victory record. Lewis Hamilton in 2020 is going to be, I think, much more motivated. Certainly more motivated than he was in 2019. Not that he wasn't motivated at all or he wasn't good, he was very good. But now he knows going into 2020 that he's so close to becoming statistically the best of all time. His motivation, you can guarantee, is going to be a lot higher than usual. But another big motivator for Lewis Hamilton in 2020 are the new rivals that are now rising up and fighting him. Those new rivals, of course, being Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc in the Red Bull and Ferrari, respectively. 
And now that these two are now rising to the top and being Lewis Hamilton's closest competitors, you can guarantee Lewis Hamilton is going to want to teach them a lesson and show them why he is the best driver in Formula 1, which he's had to try and do to Max Verstappen and Leclerc in 2019. And if Verstappen and Leclerc really do give Lewis Hamilton a challenge in 2020, I think you could see definitely a better Hamilton than in 2019 or even 2018. Because in 2018, particularly the end of that season, Lewis Hamilton knew and we knew that he had Sebastian Vettel in his pocket. And by the end of 2018 and during 2019 as well, we knew Lewis Hamilton was clearly better than Sebastian Vettel. And even though during 2019, his teammate, who we'll get on to in a moment, Valtteri Bottas, was a lot better and a lot more competitive with Hamilton, it isn't that big of a challenge for Lewis Hamilton because he knows over the course of a season, he is going to beat Valtteri Bottas because he's better. But now with two very young and very, very quick drivers rising up to the top very quickly with Hamilton, I think we could see definitely a better Lewis Hamilton. And if you look at, for example, Lewis's battles against Max Verstappen in 2019, there has been moments where Lewis has been clearly beaten. Look at the Brazilian Grand Prix where Max Verstappen brilliantly passed Lewis Hamilton twice to go on and win the race. And despite it being close during that Grand Prix weekend, Max Verstappen was the better driver and had to beat Hamilton to win that race, and he did. And whenever Lewis Hamilton came out on top against Max Verstappen when they were battling wheel to wheel, it was very, very close in Lewis Hamilton winning that battle. Look at Monaco where he just about held on and Max Verstappen had a great chance at the end of the Grand Prix to overtake and win the race possibly. And then in Hungary, it took a monumental effort from Lewis Hamilton to even be close at the end to overtake and win that race. And if Max Verstappen can maintain that level or even improve upon that in 2020, Lewis Hamilton is going to have to get better. And if you look at Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc's battles, Leclerc has been very hard with Lewis Hamilton. Just look at the 2019 Italian Grand Prix where Leclerc was very forceful in defending his position. And even after the Italian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton came out and said that now he's going to opt for a different style of racing. Because with the FIA letting go what Leclerc did, now Lewis knows how hard and rough racing-wise he has to be with Leclerc, but also Verstappen as well. And again, if Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc can maintain or even improve on their current level and their cars improve, then if Lewis Hamilton is going to win his seventh world title in 2020, he's going to have to elevate to a new level. A new level that we possibly have never seen before. And that level may solidify Lewis Hamilton as the absolute best. But earlier, we touched on his teammate Valtteri Bottas and how Valtteri Bottas improved in 2019, but was still not close enough to teammate Hamilton in terms of the World Drivers' Championship battle. And Valtteri at the end of 2019 said that he now knows what's required if he's going to beat Lewis Hamilton and that he has a plan to beat Hamilton. But how exactly can Valtteri Bottas beat Lewis Hamilton somehow, someway this season? Now with Valtteri Bottas trying to beat Lewis Hamilton in 2020, there's only really one example he can look at. And I know, as I showed in the article just a moment ago, he said he doesn't want to do a Nico Rosberg, but that, again, is the only good example of someone in a World Championship fight in the same team beating Lewis Hamilton. And he's going to have to pay attention to that to see how Rosberg came out on top. Now, before we get into how Rosberg beat Hamilton, I have to, again, clarify my opinion on Rosberg beating Hamilton in 2016. And my opinion is... The Rosberg was lucky to beat Lewis Hamilton. If Lewis Hamilton did not have the bad luck he had, Lewis Hamilton, in my opinion, would have won the championship. But there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever Nico Rosberg was at his absolute best in 2016. And when Hamilton had an issue, he perfectly executed his own performance. But let's now get into 2016 and how Rosberg was able to finish out of Hamilton. And we'll come to first the first five races in Australia, Bahrain, Shanghai, Russia and Spain. 
The five races that really helped Rosberg gain momentum during the start of that season. And the reason Rosberg was able to gain momentum and gain that mental advantage over Lewis Hamilton at the start of that season was quite simple. Whenever Lewis Hamilton had a bad start, a reliability issue or anything went wrong, Nico Rosberg would maximise his pain. If you look at Australia, of course Rosberg also had a poor start to that Grand Prix, but Lewis Hamilton had a worse start, dropped further back and Rosberg went on to win. Hamilton though was still in second place, so Lewis wasn't losing out that many points. Then in Bahrain, again, poor start for Lewis Hamilton, then he was hit by, funnily enough, Valtteri Bottas and dropped down the field. And the best Lewis Hamilton could do after that, because he was held up for so long in traffic, was third place as Rosberg again got the maximum amount of points. And that trend would continue into China and Russia and China. He got pole position Nico Rosberg, whilst Lewis Hamilton had to start from the back because of reliability issues. And then in the race, Hamilton, of course, had a damaged front wing at the start and had quite a messy race as he finished in P7 as Rosberg yet again won the Grand Prix. And then in Russia, when Hamilton had a reliability issue in qualifying and the race itself, Rosberg put himself in P1. So coming away from those four races, every time Lewis Hamilton had that problem, that issue, Rosberg struck the biggest blow he could against Lewis Hamilton. And then of course at the next race after that was the Spanish Grand Prix where Rosberg and Hamilton collided. Which wasn't really a good thing or a bad thing for Nico because he didn't gain any points on Lewis nor did Lewis gain any points on him of course. And then after the mid-summer part of the season where Lewis Hamilton gained back the ground he lost and took control of the championship again, Rosberg, when Lewis Hamilton started to dip and have some more issues, Rosberg struck again. When Hamilton had to start, for example, at the back at Spa, Rosberg dominantly won the Grand Prix. Then when Hamilton at the Italian Grand Prix had a poor start and dropped down to about 5th or 6th place, Rosberg ran away with that race. When Hamilton wasn't on form in Singapore, Rosberg won the race. And you can see now that trend of whenever Lewis Hamilton was not on it that particular weekend or had bad luck, Rosberg made sure to maximise his pain. And then it all culminated at the Malaysian and Japanese Grand Prix where of course Rosberg was took out at the start but came through to finish in third place and Lewis Hamilton of course, who was leading the race, retired. Now Rosberg didn't maximise the points he could have but that was mainly because he was took out by Sebastian Vettel but those 15 points were very important. But what really won Rosberg the championship was the following race at Suzuka, a race that was directly one week after the race in Malaysia and simply what Rosberg had to do which he did was to deliver the final nail in the coffin of Lewis Hamilton's championship bid and again that's what he did by getting pole position and then winning the race after Hamilton yet again had a poor start and came through to finish in third and because he executed that race weekend so perfectly all he had to do for the final four races was finishing second place which he did and even when we got to the final race when the pressure was so high on Nico to close the deal he still knew what he needed to do and did it yet again in Abu Dhabi finishing second and just about winning the championship so looking at that example of how Rosberg was able to beat Lewis Hamilton it's pretty clear what Valtteri has to do when Lewis Hamilton is having a normal good weekend, Valtteri has to be in at least second or third place and not lose too many points to Hamilton. But when Lewis has a poor start, gets took out by another driver, has reliability issues, which of course every driver does tend to have during the course of a season, Valtteri has got to strike against Hamilton and take away as many points as he can when Lewis has those particular weekends, which he even had in 2019, such as Hockenheim, where he doesn't score that many points, if at all. But to be honest, guys, it's pretty hard to see Valtteri Bottas beating Lewis Hamilton in 2020 because if you compare Hamilton to 2016, Hamilton's definitely a better driver. But if Valtteri is going to beat Lewis Hamilton, then it is going to have to be down to some luck, but also him being at his absolute peak. 
which we know with Valtteri at his peak is still not quite good enough on Lewis's day to beat Lewis Hamilton if Lewis has a normal weekend. So the chances are low of Valtteri beating Lewis Hamilton in 2020, but you never know what can happen in Formula 1. I didn't think Rosberg would win the championship in 2016, he did. And maybe we will see Valtteri 3.0, but guys, let me know in the comments section down below, do you think Lewis Hamilton at the end of 2020 can become the GOAT of Formula 1? And if Valtteri Bottas somehow, some way, is going to beat Lewis Hamilton, what does he have to do? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And hit the like button as well for more content like this. And until my next video, guys, sometime next week, it has been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.